We were not only the poorest county in the state, but the poorest county in the nation. And when I came to the county in the 70s, you could certainly tell it. In Fayette County, more than half of the crimes that are committed against people are domestic violence. In the last two weeks, we had um, domestic violence crimes that ended in fatalities. We had uh, a, a woman who was shot multiple times by her um, uh, partner. Uh, he also shot and injured a law enforcement officer responding to the call. And not two weeks later, a um, husband shot his wife fatally and then shot himself. And that was all witnessed by a small child of the family. Um, it impacts us all. The group had been started by a uh, Catholic nun who had moved out here, Sister Mairead O'Reardon, who was uh, straight over the boat from, from Ireland, uh, had the brogue and, and, and everything. My favorite term is two nuns in a barn. And we had a barn and we had two nuns and um, they spread the word to identify those in need and to pull the two together, that is, the community that could help and the people that needed the help. Um, never en envisioned it being what it is today. Um, I thought if we could distribute some food and distribute some clothing to those people in need, that we would be doing a good job. Uh, having seen it blossom into what it is today, never entered my mind. This is an agency that brings an entire community together to serve families in crisis. I mean, it's about protecting families in need. Um, so we help end homelessness and break the cycle of domestic violence uh, and help elevate families who are uh, in financial crisis to stability and self-sufficiency. If it's close to you, or it's happening to you, or it's happening to a friend, what you need, what you need to do is tell somebody. And so you look around for somebody to tell. And with this facility right here, you know that you can go in there and you can tell somebody. We saw often that shelters couldn't receive kids who were older than 10 years old. Because when you're blending families, there are certain risks inherent in that. Um, an understandable problem, but can you imagine being a victim of domestic violence, fleeing a horrific situation, then trying to come to a shelter and being told that your 10-year-old son can't join you? Uh, that you, what, relinquish him to state custody? Uh, it, absolutely not a choice. So you're back at that dangerous home and feeling like there are no options for you. So we took great care to think about how do we not make that happen? How do we not um, send a victim right back into the, the hands of an abuser? And so we developed units that were individual. With the opportunity for transitional housing, um, the Federal Home Loan Bank of Cincinnati provided grant opportunities. And so our bank funded the project and then the Federal Home Loan Bank issued a grant to pay us back, which allowed for the project to be completed in a very timely manner without a lot of fundraising. It 
it would be the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church and the other denominations, I don't want to leave anybody out, or the Boy Scouts, or the Rotary Club, or the Lions Club. A really wonderful opportunity for support in our community is our donation center and thrift shop, which when people give, and they can give anything, clothing, housewares, toys, um, of course our food pantry, food, uh, but the, the, the thrift shop is a place where we glean products that we may need to equip the shelter. So there may be pots and pans or dishes or towels. Um, we set up the shelter for families to be able to come in with little to nothing because many have not had an opportunity to gather belongings and, and get out in a, in a timely manner. So um, those items that are gently loved and donated with so much care are given to those families when they come in their time of need and then they take them with them. So when they transition to a home of their own or with our help to supportive housing, transitional housing, um, they take those supplies and uh, then don't have to burden those expenses of setting up a new home. Um, but the thrift shop is also an exceptional opportunity for our um, clients to participate. We have hired clients and that's been a launch pad to another job, job skills, Hey, this helped me get that job that later helped me get that manager's position that kept us in a safe environment and a healthy environment. When you look back prior to cell phones, you had to use uh, a camera. Uh, a lot of times with uh, domestic violence cases, you would like an instant, uh, the ability to have evidence produced instantly. And instead of sending film to a Walgreens to get it developed back in the day, Alexandra was able to get a grant from uh, Polaroid. And Polaroid provided us with the Instacams, the one shot and the picture comes out. We thought that was the greatest thing ever. We were approached by Fayette Cares about the lethality assessment program, which honestly I knew nothing about at the time. It's basically taking a form with specific questions geared toward is that subject going to be a violent uh, subject as far as fatalities go. And it's a very short form. It doesn't take a lot of time for officers to fill out, which is great. But the benefits that, that it has is absolutely incredible. If the suspect ranks where they have a potential um, to kill someone, and an officer is sitting there telling a the victim that, that takes on a whole, whole new uh, dynamic with that victim. I guarantee you that they've never had a police officer before sit there and tell them scientifically here is here's the evidence that we have that we are that concerned that you may be killed by this person if you continue to interact and have a relationship with this person. Our numbers for domestic violence have, have risen tremendously. Uh, the call for help comes far more often now than it did in the past. There's still so much to do as far as educating the public on domestic violence. Um, Bet Cares has done a great job so far, and um, there's just a lot of work that needs to be done out there. It, it, brings, it brings me in contact with people in their darkest hour, which is very painful and very difficult, but that's when they need someone. Because in future years, when they have to look back at the, at the suffering that maybe their family went through, it was this highlight 
of being at the Fayette Cares facility where they could have as normal a life as, as uh, we could give them. Open your eyes. Um, it's there. That is our calling, uh, to take care of each other.